Um, hi, I'm Nika Haktalab, and this is a joint work with Panjal Abasti, Nina Balkan, and Hong Young Zhang. Um, in this work, we are going to talk about a problem where we are given a signal W star that's unknown, and we have corrupted measurements in the form of sine of that signal with sample points drawn from a distribution. What we want to know is can we approximately find that W star from these corrupted signs? This is uh, known as the, in learning theory, it's known as learning half spaces. And in signal uh, processing, usually it's known as uh, one bit compressed sensing. When there is no noise, where uh, you see exactly what that sign of W star dot X is, if you have enough samples, you can show that any consistent half space is a good enough approximation. So that's great. But once you have noise, uh, there are no perfect half spaces. And uh, the difficulty of this model really depends on what kind of assumptions you make on the noise model. Also in one-bit compressed sensing, we are also concerned with sparsity. For example, if W star is guaranteed to be as sparse, then we want a number of samples that depends polynomially in S and only logarithmically in the ambient dimension D. Uh, both of these, um, uh, both in learning theory and signal processing, uh, this problem has been mainly considered uh, for symmetric noise models. So in this talk and in this work, we are going to go beyond symmetric noise models and focus on what happens when we have asymmetric noise. One of the natural asymmetric noise models is the bounded noise model, or also called Mossard noise model. In this case, you start with an, a non-noisy setting. This is realizable. And then some adversary comes in, and for each point x, will flip the, the label of x, but with the restriction that the probability of flipping this point is at most a fixed eta. So this is asymmetric because you can have regions that are not flipped at all and regions that are maybe flipped as most as you can. So this is a very asymmetric but still simple to describe noise model. And uh, this noise model is known to have very nice statistical properties, but from the computational point of view, actually it's been uh, quite elusive. Um, first evidence that there is a polynomial algorithm was an earlier work of uh, our myself with Abbasi, Balkan, and Erner that showed that when the noise is very small, you can indeed have efficient algorithms for this recovery. So in this talk, we're going to go beyond this very level, like small level of noise that we can tolerate and try to tolerate ev any, any constant noise and also do this in a one-bit compressed sensing fashion, so the number of samples we need is going to be, again, just polynomial in the sparsity. Another asymmetric noise model is the adversarial noise, noise model, or also the agnostic model, uh, where you start with the, you can think of it as starting with the realizable case, and then you have an adversary that comes in, and the adversary will flip an eta fraction of the points now. So this could be a very deterministic fashion of flipping. It doesn't have to be probabilistic. And uh, what you want to do after this flip is done, you want to again find what is opt um, half space. This is a very difficult model. Um, most of the results known in this space are usually negative in terms of computational efficiency. But when you have log concave distribution uh, or isotropic log concave distributions, there are kind of there are a uh, couple of very nice results about this. For example, uh, the polynomial regression of KKMS shows that you can get arbitrarily close to opt, but the price you have to pay both in sample and runtime is going to be exponential in one over epsilon. Uh, there's also an algorithm of ABL that shows that um, now instead of getting arbitrarily close to opt, if you want to get some constant approximation of opt, you can do that. And you can do it with a polynomial, truly a polynomial time algorithm. This is also studied under one bit compressed sensing, but the uh, error or the approximation factor is much worse than what we know in the non sparse case. Um, so, and this is Plan and Vershinin's paper. So what we are going to do in this talk is that we are going to achieve what we used to be able to achieve in the non-sparse case, but now with a number of samples that uh, fits the one-bit compressed sensing setting. Again, polynomial in sparsity only. Um, good. So I want to just give you a flavor of some of our techniques. Uh, we are going to use uh, an iterative refining technique, which means that um, 
well, which means that we are going to try to, for any half space, whatever error it has, we are going to try to uh, improve that error and repeatedly do this until we have a half space of some nice error. So a uh, key idea here is that uh, one of the properties of log concave distributions, which we are considering in this work, is that most of the errors or most of the mistakes that a half space makes is going to be very close to the half space boundary. For example, here, if this is our true signal W star and this WK minus one, if we are considering it, the error region is really the shaded region. And you can show that, it's, so it's divided to two regions, the error outside of some band and the error inside of some band. And inside this band, even, even if you make mer error on everything, which you're not gonna make an error, even if you do that, still the error that's inside band or the, the possibility of making an error inside band is much larger than outside. So in a sense, if you just focus on what's happening inside the band, you can improve uh, the error of a half space overall. And this is the idea. So what we want to do is that given any half space, look at its, look at its um, margin and find the half space that's doing really well inside the margin. So it has some constant error inside the margin. And it is a half space, so you can kind of repeatedly continue this. So it's a half space and has like a small angle to our previous guess. So these are the two properties that we look for now, but for what we want to achieve in the band. So how can we achieve these two properties? So we're going to consider two algorithms, the polynomial regression, and uh, just like a convex loss minimization, like hinge loss maybe. So polynomials are quite expressive. If you want a constant error, you can, you can achieve that with a constant degree polynomial, so that's good. But, well, the outcome is not a half space, so we cannot kind of repeatedly do what I was explaining in the last slide. For convex loss minimization, you can achieve this, uh, this um, constant approximation for adversarial, so that's great. But if you want to really achieve opt plus epsilon, you can only do it when the noise is very small. So again, this is not quite what we want. But the good thing is that, well, it's very easy to find the half space that's within certain um, angle because that's just a constraint that you're going to add. So together, so individually, not, neither of these two algorithms are going to give you what you want, but you can combine them. And this is how we're going to combine them. First, we are going to draw some samples. And then we said that let's just focus in the margin. So let's just look at the examples that are going to fall in the margin. And uh, we're going to find a polynomial here. So using the polynomial regression algorithm, we are going to find a polynomial. Good. So now I have a polynomial that fits this. It has a small error, but unfortunately it's not a half space. So in the next step, I'm going to approximate the polynomial itself with a half space. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to assume that my samples are now coming from the polynomial. So I'm going to draw samples, but I'm going to label them using the polynomial. And then running the hinge loss minimization, I'm going to find a W, a half space that's now an approximation to the polynomial. In general, this step, there's no reason that it should work with a guarantee, but if you, in, in this case, we're going to use the properties of the noise and properties of log concave distribution to show that you can, like using hinge loss minimization, approximate the polynomial. So that's just the flavor of our techniques. And uh, if you repeat this log of one over epsilon times, every time you've divided your error by half and you're gonna be within what you want. So I just want to conclude the talk uh, by kind of summarizing what I said and what I didn't say. So what we did was that for bounded noise, we showed that you can achieve opt plus epsilon for any value of noise eta and you can do it in a one-bit compressed sensing fashion. To get this result, what I didn't show is that we extend the, the polynomial regression of KKMS for sparse half spaces. So that's also interesting in its own right. For adversarial noise, we show a similar result, but this time a multiplicative approximation. And what I showed you was an iterative refining algorithm. You might wonder, do we need to do this kind of iteration? Yes, absolutely we do. In fact, we show that a one-time minimization of most of loss functions, most reasonable loss functions, are not going to give you what you want. In terms of future directions, what I told you was really for isotropic log concave distributions. So naturally, can we do something for beyond those distributions? And also for other noise models. We know that for 
no noise or, or symmetric noise, things are pretty easy. We showed that for bounded noise, they're kind of easy when you have the lock concave distribution. And for adversarial noise, it's difficult. But there's a whole range of problems here. For example, Tubakov noise. Can we give some sort of guarantees for these other noise models that fall in between? So those are the results that we have, and I would like to hear your thoughts and questions. <laughs>